This week's episode of the Deck Chair Numbers podcast is brought to you by Thank Fuck That's Over. <laughs> I'm back from the fringe. I'm never doing it again. I'm fucked. If I'm funny on this, it's going to be a miracle. Nev, play the fucking intro. What's up, motherfuckers? Yeah, what's up, motherfuckers? You're all very welcome back to another episode of the Dag Chair Yums podcast mm-hmm. with me, Mickey Bartlett, aka Dag Chair, aka Sore Feet, aka Sore Legs, <laughs> aka Sore Belly, aka Bad Liver, aka Shit and Blood. And him, Connor Keyes, went over for three days, had a great time. <laughs> the picture of health. Fucking back from the trenches. I swear, I'm, that's it. Never. Ah, oh, the famous final words, never again. Never again. No, I... Never doing that fucking dirty, rotten, piece of shit, <laughs> fucking arts festival again. Hey. I don't know how you did it. I'm, I'm still not right from four days. And you did 28. But in fairness, the four days you were there was four days we went at it. We went hard. 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 hard so. Yes, yes. Uh, we so... drank a lot of whiskey. A lot of gin. <laughs> a lot of rum from myself. The, the good thing about you being there, that was the... Because that, that was the two days I sat down to eat. That's right. <laughs> it was all newfangled with a seat. I forgot how to use a knife and fork. <laughs> I was just running between... Look at the weight I've lost. Oh, stone and a half. Yeah, look at that. Svelte. S- s- uh, well, svelte like shit. <laughs> svelte like shit. I'm fucking knackered. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I landed in on the Sunday evening. Because we, obviously uh, we did one. I came back. Yeah, but, yeah no, mid, mid fringe, yeah. So we haven't we haven't talked about we can, we can talk from mid fringe onwards then. Yes, because obviously everyone who's listening to the podcast knows what happened at the start. Yeah, it was a good boy took edibles, sent William to space, met That's him on the moon. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Finished the podcast here, right? Uh-huh. And this is where the stress started. It was, the first two weeks was fine. Yeah, it's coasting. You yeah. had a pretty hectic schedule, or schedule as a schedule. If you're doing <laughs> from what you were saying earlier, so I left here on the Wednesday. No, Thursday. Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, Thursday. When Thursday. It was a Thursday. See, this is another thing that happens at the Fringe. I don't know what day it is now. I'm not joking. I was, like I said, only four days there, and every day melted into one. And I was like, what day is this? I don't know. Because right. nothing, there's no rhyme or reason. Yeah. Everything's open to five in the morning. Yep. So you can come out to Tuesday at five o'clock in the morning, and it feels like a Saturday. You yep. don't know what day it is. So you're traveling, say, let's say for Thursday. Okay, we'll go with Thursday. It was Thursday, because okay. the gig was on the Wednesday. Right. So I woke up, on the, so the Wednesday, right? I Where was the gig on Wednesday? Banger. Banger, okay. So I didn't sleep on the Tuesday night, because I was flying home early Wednesday morning, mm-hmm. right? Flew home, had a couple hours kip, did a gig, then had to get up early the next day to come up here to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't sleep, because I knew I had to get up early. Yes. Right? So over the course of 48 hours, I had about four hours sleep, <laughs> right? We blasted we podcast out. Good crack, fine, 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 funny, funny. I'm sure you'll agree. Award-winning, funny, yeah, type of type of humor. Don't know what award we're gonna win, but well, yeah, well, I didn't fucking win one Edinburgh anyway. No, um, and then we drove straight to the airport mm-hmm. to fly back to Edinburgh. Right, so my flight was supposed to be at one o'clock. Uh, I got there, and as I looked at the board, it said delayed, and so like I mean, it just happened as I looked oh. at it. I then got a message that someone I used to go out with that didn't end well. Mm-hmm. was also on a delayed flight and was in the same airport. Mm-hmm. So I then immediately went to the nearest fucking restaurant that had big menus <laughs> and just sat like that. Bought a copy of the Financial Times. Sweating like fuck because <laughs> I was so tired. Just about to cry. I was so fucking tired. My flight eventually left at about half six. Mm-hmm. I had to cancel all my shows that night. Oh, fucking hell. And then when I got there, somebody was like, oh, you're supposed to be doing a roast of Kieran Bartlett tonight. And I was like, you can suck my bum if you think I'm doing anything like that. And I just smashed a wee edible and I passed out, sir. Hey. What else do you need? But the stress of that day. I can imagine. I swear I to actually God. can't imagine because I, like, I, I got stressed uh, flying to Manchester that time for uh, an hour's delay. It's, it's, I don't. It like, you, were there, you were there for, what, six, seven hours? Yeah. Drives me mental. And then the it was... Belfast the, airport, of all airports. Man, and it was rammed. Oh. It was rammed. Like, I know at the minute... There's a, last night there's all those flights were delayed because of all over the UK because I think there's a quarter million people stranded now because it's everywhere man because of France apparently has a load of strikes as well is it has something to do with air traffic they said it was they said, uh, they said, but the UK one apparently they said it was a uh, um, a glitch a glitch or a malfunction which means a cyber attack well that's the, but they've come out and said it isn't a cyber attack of course it is and you can trust the government of course you can um, but the 
the thing is, so when I was delayed last week, I, someone got in touch who is, uh, I'm not going to say who or what to do, but they work in the aviation industry. Oh, okay. Uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. And told me, fucking, we, uh, it was a bit of a fucking, what? We insider uh, info. Fucking, not enough pilots, apparently. Right. Well, no, I said not enough pilots. The person went, basically, and I was like, hmm. what do you fucking know? I don't know, huh? <laughs> you forget I grew up before 9-11. I want to trust the aviation industry, <laughs> all right? Uh, I can remember bringing a ton of coke on a plane. Do I remember? I was class, remember? <laughs> remember, remember, remember the time we went on that plane with all those box cutters? <laughs> Sorry, Polish fellas. Uh, <laughs> we're back! <laughs> that's right, that's terrible. <laughs> but, uh, what the fuck was I going to say? I'm so tired. <coughs> I, so my flight was delayed on that, that <laughs> Thursday. She and Todd was over in Edinburgh on the Friday. That's right, yeah. His flight was delayed like fucking the Saturday morning. So this has been happening for ages. Mm. Now, I don't know if it's like, if it was just Edinburgh Airport because the fringe was on. Maybe, yeah. There tends to be a sort of mass exod- exodi? Exodus? Exodus. Exodus is Just a mass exodus. Just a mass exodus. Yeah. But can you have a single exodus? Or is that just an exit? No, well, I mean, could you make an exodus out of this podcast? I don't know what or, that means. That's what I mean. Is it, it's just is, fancy for exit, isn't it? Isn't it kind of is, fancy yeah. to flee? Yeah, to flee, basically. Mm, to yeah. f- well, there was, there was fleas all over Edinburgh Airport. <laughs> fleas. <laughs> what? Fleas? What? Fleas. <laughs> like refugees. It's fleas. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not but, refugees. It's refugees. I know, but I was adding the E's for the fleas. Well, it would still just be fleas, though, wouldn't it? No, it would be fleas. You don't go flea eat wood, Mac. Dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. Well, you would if your mate was called Mac and you were talking Do about Do you know what I mean? It's termites. like the land of the brave, the home of the free E. <laughs> the second E's silent. Nah, you're missing the whole point of it. You're fucking spelling words wrong. But you're just unpronouncing them wrong, too. Anyway, there's a max exodus. <laughs> <laughs> from Edinburgh Airport and Shane had to Shane had to fly or get a train from Edinburgh to Newcastle and fly from Newcastle to because he couldn't actually get into the airport that's mental um, I, so, I managed to fucking miss all that on both, both trips I had no we ground on the way back yeah because yeah. um, I well what time was your flight four five o'clock oh, okay because yeah. mine like I I flew back yesterday morning and I um I booked it because I was I've done the fringe enough times to know I'm like I need to be on that first chopper out of Saigon. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Seven in the morning, I just sunglasses, bearing out, bearing. Sad box of bog, red and red and black. Ooh, that red, white, and blue, bluey, bluey. Uh, unlike unlike them, you know, you weren't worried about Charlie. Is that a cocaine joke? Might have been. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't even. I only know that I only know that um, cocaine's even called Charlie from a movie that I saw. Oh yeah, <laughs> that you showed me one night in your house when you were taking heroin, <laughs> junkie. Uh, I fucking don't, I don't touch that shit. I know you don't. No, buy that. No, I do, I fucking <laughs> I dabbled a couple of times over the years. <laughs> You do get a bad reputation. That was your own fault. It's me because you talk about it. Dude, it's because people fucking believe things. I people don't understand that comedians tell fucking jokes. Do you know why I never had psoriasis on my dick and people have called me scabby cock for like a year? At no point, I want to say this publicly. At no point did I party with ISIS. You fucking morons. <laughs> Sorry. No, you can't believe all of it. It is all true. You want people to think it's not true, then they'll stop laughing. Uh, I did party with ISIS. It was class. It was just one of them though. I see. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I flew, I, my flight was at seven this morning, yesterday morning, sorry. Uh, but in between my show and the week compilation show that me and William were doing together, yes, right? The 11 o'clock, best, the 11 o'clock, Northern, Irish. best of Northern Irish. And, uh, I went down for a couple of wee drinks, thought I'll have a couple of wee drinks, mm-hmm. keep myself sort of awake until mm-hmm. I have to leave. I thought I'm going to leave at four, mm-hmm. get to the airport for five, check in my luggage on the flight for seven, yeah. bosh, home, right? Yes. And I, I basically realized, like, well, I can't sleep. Between 12 and 4, because I know I'll not wake up. No. And as I was talking to our good friend, James the Duck White, mm-hmm. he's like, ah, fucking, fucking later flight, man. Fuck. <laughs> fucking fucking duck. later flight, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you could just, he's so convinced. I know, and then I fucking full deck chair, like, good, good idea, mate. <laughs> he knew who he was talking I, to, like. <laughs> so I booked a 3 o'clock flight, 
It's funny you were talking about coke and my nose is running, but it's nothing to do with coke. I swear to God. Swear to God. Swear to God. Uh, my arse is melting from the heroin window. Um, <laughs> but uh, I so I booked a three o'clock flight, thinking, "Fuck it, I'll go out dead on." Hmm. Went to watch a mate of mine. It was on late and live, and it hit two, and I went, "The fuck am I doing? Sitting waiting around here just to have more gin?" So went, went home, packed. Went home. I, I, was, I was already packed. All right, okay. Um, went back, packed up like the, the whatever we yeah. left over bits. I had to pack up. Uh. You know, brushed up all the toenails and wanky tissues. It was a full month of just Jackson Pollock. Like, at one point, there was something <laughs> stuck to the wall, and I was like, oh my, is that, a, is that a tissue full of seminal fluid? And I went, oh no, it was a face mask. I just fucked it. <laughs> but <laughs> but I'd done that much debauchery, debauched things to myself that I thought, fuck, I've, I've got spunk on the wall. Um, a spunksy. Oh God, a wanksy. Yeah, it made more sense. Wanksy. And anyway, if I thought Wanksy was too obvious, oh yeah, well, I mean, Spunksy doesn't make sense. No, do you know I mean Spunksy sounds like you've just shortened the name of a, a early nineteen sixties ash so stone. I don't know. Oh yeah, right now. No. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> no, I'm genuinely not. I'm driving, uh, I'm driving him home to you, officer. <laughs> uh, no, we are. But what was I going to say? I so then I fucking got to the airport at five, mm-hmm. and it was fucking rammed. Paid for fast track security because I was like, I'm not fucking not putting mm-hmm. up with this shit today. And flight took off. I slept because I hadn't been asleep. <laughs> I didn't feel the plane land. And the stewardess had to shake me awake. And the plane was fucking empty. So, and I was and like, a fucking plane hits, the, God, hit, hits the ground. Yeah, yeah. Quite a fucking thud. I Even I would fucking be jolted yeah. awake. Like. <laughs> not a thing. Jesus. Not a fucking thing. Uh, don't even, I think I was asleep before it took off. <laughs> um, but then, thank fuck, because like once it had about half eight, mm-hmm. every flight was delayed. Fuck so you just got in, but just got in, but yeah. like I've had a wait at the three o'clock and I've still been in Edinburgh, <sighs> losing my mind. Uh, but because yeah, I have mates that are uh, Matthew Collins, friend of ours, uh-huh. uh, said he was on the plane when it got cancelled. Holy fuck! I think it said the N word or something. Uh, the plane did. Right. Uh, there you go. Took a wee while. Thank you. Uh, delayed, huh? It's not delayed. It's not delayed or yesterday. The times were different then. And dancing wasn't dance halls. I had to put the da- I was, I'm, I'm out of my mind, Connor. I've fucking told jokes for a month. I shouldn't do this straight after the fringe. I need time off. <laughs> fucking five shows a day for 28 days straight. And you want me to be funny all over again? You need to get a bit of rehab or something. Fuck me, you want to swear? Not even a good review. doesn't matter. But... Uh, <laughs> None the now show. Now we're getting to the crux of it. None the show. Now we're getting to the crux of it. Fucking dirty, rotten bastards. <laughs> Fuck. I didn't get over that. Uh, ah, what we're yeah, no. flights. So, yeah, so Edinburgh is do- over and done with. Yes. But, well, let's talk about. So, so I, I arrived on the Sunday evening. Mm-hmm. We met up. I, I think I did the Northern Irish thing that night mm-hmm. on the Sunday night. Um, or no, maybe it was the Monday night. Sorry, it was the first night of it because it was le- quarter past eleven at night. Yes. So on the Monday we were quite well behaved. We went to Lit and Live. I think you were in Lit and Live with a few subs, just sort of kept us going. No, what night did we? Or, get sorry, fucking, what night sorry, did we get bollocks? That was Monday. No, sorry, yes, Monday night was the night we got bollocks, wasn't it? Because yes, no, it wasn't. It was. It was Sunday. It was. If you got there on the Sunday, you went straight for it. We did, but I mean. The bad one. I think that was the Tuesday night. Yeah. Yeah. Because here's what happened. So we kind of went out, um, let's say, two o'clock. What night was it? Yeah. What <laughs> night was it you kept making fun of my hair? <laughs> Probably Tuesday night. I think, no, I, I, but you were going, folk would fix your hair. And I'm like, it, it was, so basically we went to the loft bar, which is an outdoor, there's an outdoor sort of smoking area mm-hmm. on the roof of the Gilded Balloon building, TV at Hall, right? It's Scotland. It's windy as fuck, right? And my hair is blowing. And that fat cunt is like, fucking fix your hair, fucking steady. I know, but it was, okay, like, okay. it was like something beside fucking Trump on a fucking runway. I know runway. it's annoying as fuck. My wee alfalfabit was doing a Hitler salute. <laughs> it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and him just every two seconds, fucking put that down as if I've done it on purpose. <laughs> and then you handed out your special fucking vape. Oh, I... And everybody in that fucking bar left looking like a, I'm sorry to say this, Chinese person. <laughs> And I would also like to apologize for the Chinese people in the Chinese restaurant when I told Connor about this. And I went, everybody left that bar like that. And he went, fuck up, you're in a Chinese. And I completely forgot it was in a Chinese. I wasn't even drunk. 
so I was yes, that was the Monday night when I we met with uh, the first time we seen Kai. Yeah, it was the Monday night. So we met Kai Humphreys mm-hmm. uh, at the Loft Bar along with Doc uh, and that crew, and then on the Tuesday night when we were going to go at it, we Schloss was there and Kai was there. When you said go at it means he means out. Well, we it wasn't like Meow. we also went at it. Uh, I would tapped out early that night, didn't we? On the Monday night, we tapped out early. On the Tuesday night was the bad night. Tuesday was the bad one because we had to... Basically, I hosted... This is all bl- blurred into one night. Yeah. The Tuesday night, I hosted your compilation show. Mm-hmm. And we had been drinking from two o'clock. We hadn't been drinking from two o'clock. Okay, maybe half three. You might have been drinking from that. I wasn't drinking with you. Was there a show before? Though? No, we we had went to... Uh, See, this is where it all blurs into yeah, one thing. And we I went to Three coming. Sisters. We went to them different places. Uh, yeah. We did go drinking early. We did go drinking early, yes. And then you did your show. <laughs> Slightly inebriated. But not, well, not right. steaming. Not no, steaming. Right, no, no, you I were think right. I only had the two and the Three Sisters. Yeah. And then that was it. I yeah. went and got a wee fucking strategic right. mac and cheese. That's right. So, uh, anyway, I didn't stop. I kept going, mm-hmm. and I had made the wise decision of not drinking any beer because what would be the point? Aye. I would just go. St- I just took your notion of just going straight onto the the Morgans and, mm-hmm. and, and Diet Coke, and uh, that that wasn't the best idea, Mick. I'm not going to lie to you. Now it wasn't. Uh, I hosted your show, and I don't remember hosting the show. Oh, that, yeah. So <laughs> your wee part. So Connor Keys was supposed to do ten minutes. And he did 25 minutes. Now, I don't know if regular listeners of the podcast might know the shit I used to take for a thing called a Bartlett 7, <laughs> which is where you do 7. You're supposed to do 7, you do about 10. The keys he In 10, my defence. Two and a half times the, the amount of time he was supposed to do. In my And defense. he was not doing well. <laughs> In my defence, I was so drunk, right? And I knew I wasn't doing well, right? And the worst thing was, in my head, I was like... You could see you were like, I'll get him on the next one. I'll get the- <laughs> right? But in my <laughs> head, I was like, fuck it, I haven't done my 10, but I'm not getting them here. Aye. And I got off, and I, was, I felt bad because I hadn't done my full time. Mm-hmm. Aye. <laughs> and obviously died as well. And I sat down, and you went, but the chin come on your feet there. And what did I do? I looked at my feet. <laughs> That's how fucking drunk I was. And I went, what? And you went, fuck, it took you long to get off that stage. And I went... How long did I do? You went 25 hours. Get the fuck. I know, imagine me being Couldn't fucking fuck slammer with that too. It. But then, oh uh, my God. That, fuck which it. night was it that I think maybe the funniest thing I've heard all fringe? And I don't know. Oh, fuck no. Maybe we shouldn't. When there was, there was a, a guy talking to us mm-hmm. and William said something under his breath. <laughs> I'm no, sorry. Not, no, no we shouldn't. It's, no, it's yeah. going to be. You know he's going to be. And it's well, he's, he's, already, he's already going to know who he is. But so no, as well, no, you, no, he, he is. No, if he goes any further than this now, then it does. But keep that as our thing because for, that was William's thing. It was thing, so like, funny. It was fucking bang on. It was so funny. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. And I hadn't even heard it initially. I only heard it afterwards. And Jesus Christ. Man, he's sitting there when he, he, he wrote it. You into, didn't sit there. You got up and walked away. He wrote, <laughs> he, he wrote it into his phone and just showed it to me. And I, I nearly fucking collapsed. <laughs> Uh, then there was a point there was that guy that guy who came over and again we'll not talk about what he did so he doesn't know who he is mm. uh, but he was chatting about famous people he'd met over the years oh yes I and know. I text William going he looks like Robocop without his helmet <laughs> and over the course of the next few days a few other guys have gone out with the same person uh-huh. and I was like well, who is he and they were like oh he's this dude he's it's fo- it's like his hair lines really far back and I went oh Robocop and well. <laughs> that became his new name Probably one of the most influential men in comedy in the yeah. fucking twentieth century, and I'm like, you look like Alex Murphy. <laughs> Why don't you have no eyebrows? All I could fucking see I, afterwards too. And then he he became my best fucking mate. I I, I don't know. I must have been. I, I was demon, like so. That's obviously why. He, fucking shit faced. Really, really bad. And then, uh, so yeah, so we uh, then in the middle of that, I don't know how it came about or who asked or who, but we were invited on to Kai Humphreys and Daniel Sloss podcast. Uh huh. <laughs> And uh, what are you doing? It's uh, it's this new thing I bought. It's not a vape though. It's not a vape. It's It's a substitute for your mother's nipple. No, it's the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Disaster. So we got invited. Uh, Was it Kai must have asked you maybe? I I don't know how it came about. So on that night, it was like, oh my God, that's going to be fucking amazing. Like fucking Kai and like... 
Yeah. Two guys we really respect and we know. Brilliant. On Wednesday morning. Mm. I have never known an Uber driver to put so many windows down <laughs> at once and separately. <laughs> the two of us were fucking, fucking dying. Hell, man. I am going to say this. I, don't think I didn't talk all the way through that podcast. It, it is probably the worst hangover I've had in more than five, I, five I years. I would say that's when it was a, it was a bad least. one. I've never had a fucking hack. Because you know what the problem is? I wasn't that dying on the Tuesday after having what I thought was a decent heavy Aye. night on the Monday. Fuck was I wrong. And tatters like? Absolutely. And, shit. and then we had to go to, <laughs> we had to get an Uber, a taxi out to Daniel Sloss's house, which is not in like Edinburgh. So it's like, a, as you say, quite a few miles away. Aye. So the taxi driver had to suffer through that fucking thing. I, I, like- I said, the fuck, he needs to be breathalyzed Aye. because he's going to be fucking via osmosis. You're going to be fucking absolutely rolled off. And then, yeah, that's the quietest I've seen you in a podcast. I couldn't. If you get a chance to watch it, which you will. I couldn't fucking talk. And the two two of them started talking about football. And I was like, I can't even argue about why this is boring. I I was just like. You just glazing over. Deep sea David Helmet. Take it away, boys. (laughs) That was fucking rough, that. Uh, And then uh, we got the taxi back into the city with with Dan. And uh, even then, I still wasn't right. And I knew I had to do uh, Peter E. Davidson's show. Shout out to Peter E. Davidson, by the way. That was well. a great yeah. gig. Peter has, was uh, <coughs> put on a fucking hard slog over that fringe between flying and doing his own show and, and running the quarter past five show. I had to text him. First time in, a, I think, ever maybe, where I had to go, listen, man, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. But in fairness, you did extra time the night before, so <laughs> you made up for it. <laughs> oh, I had to go and sleep. Aye. No, I made up for it that night. The Wednesday night, I hosted that night sober and uh, I redeemed myself. We didn't go into Wednesday, did we? No, we couldn't. Wednesday was the night of the podcast and the, the, the hanging. We didn't fucking do anything. See, that last week was all blurred in the one big fucking mess. No, I couldn't even look at it. No, the problem is a lot of the places were using um, Pepsi Max as the mixer for Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. And then every time I took a sip of Pepsi Max the next day, I saw a good fucking I, taste. And I, was like, oh. I don't know what night it was that I woke up and I was like, oh, ah. <laughs> and... I, I know it was on my own, but I had, when I checked my jacket pocket, I had two chocolate bars in my pocket. So drunk <laughs> me was like, I sort you out in the morning, big man. I have no recollection of it. Oh. Don't know where I bought them. Don't know. I got, I woke up with munchies on my bedside locker that apparently I got from a vending machine in Europe. Combination. I, Zero recollection. I remember a bit of that. Nothing. It was rough as fuck. I'm, you just can't, <laughs> I'm God. too old for it. Like the, the thing too that was really, that was getting me, that I probably said in the last podcast as well was, I don't know how I went through 28 days straight of doing that every day. Yeah, I four remember. Years ago. I, I remember 10 years ago you doing that. And obviously, 10 years ago makes sense. You were, what, 26? But uh, uh, I remember at that point. I was going, doing it in my 30s, too, though. Like, how the fuck is he doing that? But yeah. It's it ain't worth it, man. No. And, and uh, all of it, just for me, uh, uh, the problem is drink. Aye. If I don't have any drink and, and I just. No, you wouldn't just have a hangover? No wouldn't. shit, Doc. Oh, yeah. No, but you know what I mean? I'm I mean, I could, I Professor could, Keezy here. No. If you don't drink, you don't get a hangover. What I mean is, yeah, I could do the fringe, no problem, if I totally avoided drink. Aye. If I had, if I had drank the gallon at any time, I would have to cancel shows Aye. and stuff. And I, I know they, they're hit a point, though, where, like, I, on the Saturday, because that was everything was over, because that's that's kind of how you work it. The Saturday, I sell out, mm. and then you phone the Sunday in. Yeah. Fuck it. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and, um, sorry, my fake, fake leg fell off there. Uh, and, uh, because I knew it was full on the Sunday, and mm. I went to town on the Saturday night, mm. and I was emceeing the compilation show with Willie and Kieran, mm-hmm. and I reckon I had four double gins in the space of an hour. Oh, lordy. So the trick, so what you have to do, when you're, like what I have to do anyway when I'm drinking double gins, is go, can I have that in a plastic pint glass so they give you a fucking load of tonic? Mm. So you have a drink that lasts you ages. Yeah. But because the measurements are smaller in Scotland, and they give you wee normal glasses, I just fucking hoof them. Uh, and oh, then, I know. I did the same, mm-hmm. and I paid the price. And then, yeah, I was not literally paid the price to the it's, fucking it's price of drink on the Sunday. Fucking no hangover at all. Right, I was completely fine on the Sunday. Fuck. Uh, but I can't. I can't fucking can't do it again. Was just flushed out. Might have been. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just getting out there, boys. It's not fun at all. No. It's, it's not, not good. S- no, it's not good. So I mind the times now. Ah. Go out. Because I remember one time going being in Edinburgh, and this is going to sound like a fucking. I, I was in the Three Sisters talking to two girls, and I went with both of them. <laughs> fuck them days of long gone. Sort of fuck. <laughs> and I remember, I remember one time sit, going drinking. I think I had a show at about a quarter past four in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So that was a fucking heart because like, that was like 
you'd finish at five o'clock. You might jump on to another wee spot in the evening or something. Mm -hmm. And then you were like, I'm oh, sure. <laughs> 25. Might as, well, might as well go to the pub. Yeah. And I remember the, the, one of the funniest experiences I ever had in my life was talking to these two girls at the, it was in the Three Sisters. And one of them was a wee tiny girl with big ditties. Mm -hmm. And then her mate, who was a bit, it was a bigger girl with no ditties. Mm -hmm. Right, which is you know, I'm sorry that, that sounds. By the way, I've just watched Barbie, so I feel like a real feminist right now. So I'm sorry if that sounds weird, but you had to be there. They were very good mates, two best pals, mm -hmm. and uh, they were telling me a story that they were out one night, and the girl with no ditties, a wasp flew down her top, or a bee flew down her top, and she literally ripped her top off, and went, "Oh fuck, did it sting me?" And the girl with the big ditties went, "I had stung you twice." <laughs> I, I, think, I think about that all the time. Like, what a fucking zinger. <laughs> <coughs> <Mighty. laughs> you know I mean, you, you make good people there, eh? wasn't it? Uh, well, Diddy Minstrels. Oh, uh, Diddy Is that whenever you paint your Diddy's black? I was just, everything's <laughs> opposite. Yeah. Uh, but then I, do you know what was weird? I didn't have any, I didn't have any fucking like in depth. Co it felt like, I know I said this probably in the last podcast. It felt like the first couple of weeks of the fringe, everybody I knew was kind of taking it seriously. Mm. It was like everybody I knew have, they either have a podcast or they have an online following and they're getting a show ready to tour. Yeah. Which is what the fringe, the whole point of the fringe is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be fucking. Where I landed at the start of the last week, where Aye. nobody gave a fuck anymore. That's like, <laughs> Paddy Kelly once said, "That's like turning up to the turn up that stag doing on Sunday." <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was. Yes, like. boys, fuck up. All right, <laughs> half of them like I am fucking dumb. The other ones are like I'm just gonna drink myself into oblivion. <laughs> it's weird because you do get a thing of like a uh, on the on Friday. Uh -huh. I was like, "Get me the fuck out of here." On Saturday, I was like, fucking the last one. We're going mad tonight. One more show. And on Sunday night, when it was all over, I was like, fuck, I could do it all week. <laughs> like, everybody's the same. Because when yeah. you start seeing it all getting pulled down, uh, yeah, and you see that, the city just empty. It's that calm down. You go, like oh, fuck, that was great. Mm. Um, Absolutely fucking heaving with people, as always. Uh, just fucking really, really busy. Which yeah. I was, I was kind of, I suppose, a wee bit shocked. I thought it was going to be post pandemic, there's going to be a lot less people, but it was as busy as it was 10 years ago. Like, it was fucking absolutely. Fun. Apparently, I read this morning that the um, numbers were up 11% on last year. Wow. Oh, which is yeah, good because yeah. last year was a bit quiet as well, right, I think. Okay. Um, and you were in uh, just the tonic. Yeah, Nucleus. Nucleus. Um, that Milo was there with yeah, yep. Troy Hawk. Yep. Um, our other. He's the most handsome man in the world. He is. So good looking. He's the most handsome man. Yeah. And he's in his... I think, did he say he was older than you? Yes. That's bananas. 46. Is he 46? Fuck man me, man. Like 28. He, he, Swear to he's God. He's gorgeous. He's fucking stunning. Not a line in his face. To the point, that's why I didn't want to go over and sit beside you. Oh, you don't want... You never want to sit beside him. You no. never want to sit beside no, him. No, uh, no, 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 I seen him taking his top off one time because uh, he... Like changing between gigs, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Nah, oh my God, nah! How do you, how do you, how do you get your, how do you look like that? No, definitely not. But like having fucking beans with a filet mignon. Who's filet mignon? He's a boy, <laughs> French <a> butcher. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a butcher from Paris. <laughs> Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so so I went and caught his show. Um. It, that Al, was one of the only Al, things I've seen. Al Porter was there too. That's what I was going to get to. Al Porter, Al Porter was there. Porter yeah, was he there. was in. He came in behind me, uh, after me. Um, <laughs> what a cunt! <laughs> uh, uh, there was right a bit of backlash about that. There was. There's been some backlash there about because mm -hmm. you got a just... you got a decent review from Chortle. Um. Yeah, and which was a weird review, I have to say. The re review kind of, I don't know. It kind of, it, it, it kind of had that vibe of, well, he's he's part of the establishment, so he should be all right. Which I, was a wee bit. I'll tell you what, why weird. that's happened, and this is, I don't know. This, I hope this, can you get in trouble for saying this? I personally think that the review was written to annoy comedians because it's only comedians that read Chortle. right? So it just brought more traffic. Well, yeah, well, because it was could, so well. It definitely, it definitely did bring more traffic yeah. than the other review did. But because that that has yeah. been a that has been a thing that has happened several times uh, with that one one website. Yeah, is it something that is notoriously very good and the comedians like? 
doesn't get that much mm-hmm. um and vice versa I, that's a weird one i don't know i, I think as as acts we i wouldn't want to be working with them um but <coughs> then you have promoters who probably will see money to be made the it's, sad reality is there will be people who will want but to i mean work. it's the same with fucking anybody that's had any kind of cancel you know been canceled all like louis ck who i've worked with since he's been canceled hmm. um well i know, don't like, think we have any sorry i shouldn't say we wouldn't work with him i don't i just don't think we have any control over a lineup i'm just thinking of me as a booker. Yeah, you don't, if yeah, i'm yeah. a booker in dailies for instance i you know, if I got let down by somebody who said they're not going to do it because of somebody's, I don't know, fucking political stance or right. something. But this is different. This is a bit... It's there not was, a political stance. It's not an ideology. It was like well, fucking there was actual... A, there was a case of a, a comedian who... Um, and I mentioned his name or anything, but uh, because it didn't go to court, there was no prosecution. There was no one mm-hmm. official complaints. But who had admitted to sexually assaulting someone. Um, I've seen the text message where the guy admitted to it. And he was getting booked by a venue... Even so, essentially, what happened was all the venues heard about it, <clears throat> and what they did was they they honoured the gigs they had been booked in for. Right. But they were like, once those gigs are done, that's it. Yeah. Never again. One venue kept booking them, and what happened then was the comedians who were booked to headline would pull out on the day. You see, because yeah. there was nothing they could do because it hadn't been, mm-hmm. they, and they couldn't say that's why they were doing it. They just would go, oh right, can't, can't make, make it. it. Yeah. Um, because what happened to me was. I needed the money, mm-hmm. got a call, can you come jump on? And uh, when I turned up, that comedian was there, and I just didn't stay in the green room. Yeah. Um, and there's certain, I mean, there's certain times where, because it's happened with various things over the years, that like, you know, for comedians, especially if you're full-time, you very rarely have enough money to lose a gig. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So you, end up, in, yeah, you, take it, you yeah. end up in situations where you're gigging with someone or for someone that you don't agree with, that you don't like, because yeah. you have to keep the lights on. Well, this is the thing. You know, I, sometimes, because... I, I, Whilst there's, uh, I definitely agree about it being an art form, it's also a job for people. 100%. And there's people in jobs who have to work with people who they don't agree with and don't yeah. like and really fucking detest, but it's their job and they have to it work with like- uh, But I don't know. I, I did see somebody put up, and I thought it was a great way of putting it, was that doing stand-up's a privilege, and you have to earn that privilege. It's not like an Yeah, well, job, that's true, you know? yeah. And, you, uh, you know, in that sense, it shouldn't be just class as well. He's forgiven now. It's, it's but, then, but, but then again, with someone, like, with someone like Al... Because I know that, you know, there's still a lot of comedians that have a lot of issues. There's a lot of things that, if, from what I've heard, you know, there's stuff that has been <clears throat> unsaid and, mm. you know, hasn't hit the press or whatever. But for the, the industry side of things, they go, we sell tickets. So it doesn't That's matter. what I mean. Yeah. As a promoter then, for me, no, I wouldn't be booking them. But is it the same? Like, I had to take, I, I personally fucking unscrewed Tom Ben's uh, picture off the Hall of Fame and dailies. Aye. And uh, that was well warranted because of... And then we shouted, shouted, pull! <laughs> <laughs> because of, uh, obviously, actual like criminal conviction. I couldn't believe how fucking bad that was. Mm, so, uh, yeah, as we were in the fringe, uh, I don't know how it got buried in the, in the midst of it all, but, uh, yeah, he was uh, charged with 35,000 uh, indecent images of children. Fucking hell. And didn't do any jail time. It's fucking is, insane. I don't know what the number needs to be. Is it a hundred thousand? Is it a million? I mean, Thirty-five fucking thousand. You know, and that's so. In that instance, that's not the same kettle of fish at all. But no. it's still an idea of ethics, isn't it? It's like, yeah. You know, obviously there was no question with Ben's his yeah. fucking <clears throat> his, his photo came down straight away. Like, but uh, I didn't make a big song and dance about it. I could have went on fucking. You know, I could have went on I online. Did the whole thing, yeah. yeah. But I just took it down, and that was done very. Uh, <laughs> just told thousands of people right now. Right. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like I, I, I didn't, I didn't sort of milk it. But uh, part of me now, when I heard about how many, I was like, I should have fucking milked that. Yeah, I should have fucking done it. There's so, but there's so many things. So I've seen it like because it is such a fucking dirty industry, and weirdly, I think a lot of times comedians offend people with stuff to say, mm. and people go, "You're a piece of shit," and you go, "What we're saying, we don't, we don't mean it." It's yeah. all jokes. Yeah. I, but what I, happens is the industry, to me, that's the dirty part of it. It's not the fucking actual comics. Yeah. By and large. Obviously, there's some fucking Fuck, mad cons yeah, in every walk of life. they're in the minority. Like, yeah. Like, like, like in most communities. Yeah. They are in the minority. But I know there's been, there's been certain places, like one I can think of, one in Edinburgh, that 
put this public message forward of this is how we run, this is what we do, but the whole time they were working with someone who was a sex offender. Yeah. Well, that's um, good. You know, so it's like, who'd been accused of it anyway, I don't know, I think that person got off the two, whatever, but... I'm just putting it out there because <clears throat> I need to make money and if I have to, I'll be booking Al Porter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I was doing. I was just softening these up for... Uh, yeah, yeah, I might yeah. have to book them in. You know uh, what I mean? Just <laughs> fucking softening this up. Just make it like a pound. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, pound like, fucking... Uh, Cancels out fucking uh, ethics. Oh, I fuck it. Speak for yourself. <laughs> now that I have money, I don't give a fuck. Um... Uh, but no, so that was, and the venue, uh, that room you were in was lo- a lovely room, really nice room. Yeah, it was a great uh, room when it was set up busy. Um, but it was a wee You were there the day I died in my home, were you? It was, uh, I didn't think it was as bad as the death as you said it was the day before. You had two in a row, remember? Yeah, yeah. Uh, The second one wasn't, you said it was nowhere near as bad as the earlier the, or the day before, but. It, it might have been the case that the, they were both as bad as each other, I was just used to it. Maybe, but there the was, next day, remember I said to you, I was going to meet you at the venue, and I sat outside, and the the queue of people leaving, I could hear the conversations, right, and like every fucking person was ranting that's, and raving about how good it was. And, that's that know. mental thing about it, the Edinburgh Fringe is that you'll do the exact same thing every day, mm-hmm. or you you so you'll do a thing where like, so I was still working on the show, getting it ready for stuff here, and you do the first Saturday, and you go, it's fucking ready, it's ready to go. Mm-hmm. Do the Sunday, do the Monday. You take, I took the Monday off. Tuesday. So I had a fucking such a, a coast of a run the whole way through it. And then that last Monday, Tuesday. Just, yeah. There was a point in the Monday where I referenced that it was down on my arse and the crowd laughed. And I was like, so you fucking know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, that do you know what I mean? You are, you are, you are able yeah. to laugh. <laughs> yeah. Just not at me. You're laughing at my plight. <laughs> my struggle. But none, none of my fucking jokes, <laughs> which are about plight and struggle. <laughs> <laughs> but aren't polite. But, but do you know what I mean? And I'm like, so what, what the fuck? What do you people want from me? <laughs> so that was like, a, that, was, that, was, that was, was the one real battle. The, the, the Sunday night, we did that compilation show as well. Everybody's knackered. Yeah. So you're fucking trying everything. To, and you're just like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. No one cares. But the the people walking past, and, and you had said that you had asked on that night, um, had anybody seen you before? And most hadn't, if not all. Which was all like, because a lot of Scottish voices come past. That was one of the fun things about the last week, whenever it, it, you were getting people who were either just taking a punt or they'd maybe heard from someone that you were good or whatever. Because yeah. um, it is always, that's one of the things I do like about it is going out and doing stand-up to people that aren't, and I hate fucking even using the word because I don't feel comfortable, but aren't your fans. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, so it's, to me... They that, don't know that, your voice yeah, yeah, on stage, it, as it, in like, yeah. they don't know... It feels like when you they go, don't know like, take your uh, stuff that's edgy with the pinch of salt yeah. because they don't trust... You well, know, there's, a little bit, I think there's a bit of that, and then I think there's like... But when it works, the payoff is, it's like when you go into a club, mm. and people are like, who the fuck's that guy? And you're like, that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, two guys, are, or a couple of ones are walking past, and it was so weird, because I was sitting on a bench, so they weren't they weren't seeing me, they were just in a conversation, and there was whatever number of people were in to see your show. I was literally the first sort of... First breath of fresh air, they got open and the doors out to Aye. talk to themselves. I was here in every conversation. And this kid, two guys were like, do you, do you listen to this podcast? And the, the boy's like, oh, I love it. Two of them were class. Uh, and they're like, I really fanboyed there. I couldn't believe how fucking, couldn't believe I was getting to see him. And I'm sitting there in the bench just watching Aye. him. Pat, and he had no Aye. idea I was even sitting there. And I was like, that's fucking deadly. Like, but then, uh, so that night then we met uh, with a couple of ones. Remember the two fellas from, from here? We met a load of ones. Shout out to Aye. all the people actually who, who you probably met. Obviously loads, but even in my four days, we met quite a few people. But I think it was was it Dan and Rory. Dan was the guy, the, the nurse. You're asking no. the wrong guy. Rory was from uh, Draperstown, and I'm asking. Uh, I, I know that him, there was there was one guy. Was, yeah. I was walking past. I was walking down to the abattoir one night, and Paddy just finished his show, and he was standing getting a photo. He was like, "Mike, what's crack? Like, come for a pint, whatever." And this guy went, "Mickey Bart, what the fuck are you doing here?" And I went, "A comedy festival." <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is awkward. Don't I'm, you, I'm working on the mac and cheese stand right uh, Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm just flaring for people. And then the cheeky cunt goes, oh, "I went to see Paddy. He's funnier than you." And I was like, "You <gasps> fuck what better." What the fuck? Why would you? I don't. It's, I don't. It's care. That, it's that thing, I know it is that thing, but I but just it's also don't it's just it. it's especially the comedy festival when somebody's trying to have that banter and you go, "I just hurt my feelings." I'm, yeah. like, I'm so tired. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm so emotion- I have no shields so here. So emotionally and physically yeah. drained. It's like it's my yeah. last gig of four this day. <laughs> And I've just let myself, I'm just like, oh. And you're like, you're shit. And you're like, fuck. What do I have to do? <laughs> For fuck's sake. 
Uh, and that's another thing as well that I love about Edinburgh, and it's sick that I love it. But every so often you'll see somebody who is in a show in the middle of a Sainsbury's just crying. <laughs> just fucking wiped out. Like, you just see some poor fucking student, and you know they're an act because they've got a massive backpack with an umbrella sticking out of it. And they're just standing crying. And you're like, yep, I, yep, I fully understand. Right there. Um, it is a, it is a fucking, it is a, it's a, I don't know, again, it's a drain on people that performing. Um, but even the people who live there. Oh, for, man. For the, the other 11 uh, months of the year, it must be a fucking that's, nightmare. Uh, that, you that's, must avoid just the city centre. Like well, that, that was the joke I ran with sort of t- from the start of the show is that I enjoy the Edinburgh Fringe the way people from Edinburgh enjoy it, mm. which is for three days you go, this city feels electric. <laughs> and by the fourth day you're thinking things you would never normally think. Such as why there's so many fucking Chinese people here? <laughs> because for some reason, the, the, more walked, the, man, the more I walked, man, the more I walked around. I don't mean it. Obviously, fucking welcome. Bring me your yeah. tired, your masses, your hunger. Like you know me, I'm a wee happy. Yeah. But every street I was on in Edinburgh, no matter what fucking street it was, there was a ch- confused Chinese guy with a neck pillow on. <laughs> and I was def- it was different out. Chinese people. I could tell because the neck pillow was a different color. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we should find out. Maggie never really did a survey to find out if they were actually Chinese. Oh, you can um, tell. <laughs> but I mean, I was using the. I was and using, you? I was. Do you know what I mean? I, I wasn't was using, like, oh my god, there's a Jamaican. No, I was <laughs> using the more uh, uh, broad term of Asian would maybe be better because they're Vietnamese and Thailand. No, they're Chinese. Or like Chinese, okay. Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> and I've done the fringe enough times. I can tell the difference. You're the racist now because I can tell the difference between a Chinese, a Japanese, and a Vietnamese and a Korean. <coughs> okay. And Sorry. Malaysian, and Nepalese. Yeah. <laughs> and look at these. <laughs> uh, do, you know, do you know what I did see and I think it's one of the things as well that's kind of uh, makes me like it's it's obviously that, that sort of Celtic sort of vibe between Ireland and Scotland because mm-hmm. uh, if I'd have seen the same thing in London I don't think anything would have happened but a tourist I was walking from uh, my show down to the stand on Friday night um, I was hosting a show down there and I saw now and if this had happened in London nothing would have happened mm-hmm. so I saw a tourist get their phone stolen um, now in London that happens all the time mm-hmm. you go please help me someone has it on my phone and English people are like oh yeah mate it's stuck in London isn't it yeah you just get another <laughs> phone don't you there's a vital phone shop every day mate stop fucking crying but in Scotland this tourist was like, please help someone stole my phone. And just everybody in Scotland was like, where does the cunt? <laughs> <laughs> and they're just fucking baiting up the road. Beat the fuck out of them. And I'm just standing there eating a fucking mac and, mac and cheese. Like, well done, Scotland. You can take his phone, you can't take his freedom. Fucking I right. swear to God. Take I his do. legs, Mundern, bastard. <laughs> I do. It, I know, obviously, there's a historical connection to here and all the rest, and blah, blah, but there's such a feeling of being home when you're in You know what I mean? It's I, like, there's more relatable things there than there is in England or Wales. Oh, yeah, For totally. Us, like, especially yeah. in the North, like, there's so many things that are so relatable. Sectarianism. But, yeah. That's it. It's just sectarianism. <laughs> two languages and our ambulances and all that sort of crack. That's also or that. Two languages. Do we have two languages in our ambulances? Oh, not in our ambulances. No, we don't know. No, we live in Northern Ireland. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, where was it I seen it? It says Paylers. Oh, it's, it's an old, uh, old, uh, Council signs and all that crack is double Irish, so that all the, the, the departments and all that they have. Oh, yeah, but not on the fucking and, and Ulster Scots. I but not in the cop cars, like. Not, not, not. I do think now that would be a good idea. I don't think you should have Irish on Northern Irish police cars. I think that's, do you know what I mean? No, you should but have Ulster Scots. Also Scots. <laughs> yeah. Peter Wagon, or whatever the fuck that would be. Pig Machine. Cargo Woo Woo. To the way, Ulster Scots is very kind of. Tizzamy. Uh, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? What's yeah. that called there? The vacuum cleaner. All right, uh, floor sucker. How to look? Uh, is that uh, a child of additional needs? No, that's a wee dafty. Wee dafty. Remember the joke I used to have about that? Wee dafty. Horrible name for a child with additional needs. Great name for a band, though. <laughs> We're the wee dafties. One, two, three, three. <laughs> <laughs> what a con. I know. <laughs> What are you joking though? Don't good, take it seriously. What a good call. I mean, I'm actually a good person. Uh, one of the best things I've seen, one of the fucking, and one of, so one of the things I did like about Edinburgh this year was late and live. I ended up doing mm-hmm. a bunch of them because mm-hmm. I'm good mates with uh, Katie who books it. Shout and out a, to Katie. Shout out to Katie Palmer. And a lot of people were pulling out. So late and live used to be on a printed bit of paper and now they have a whiteboard. 
yeah. because notoriously people go, I'm fucking too tired yeah, or too fucked, yeah. don't want to do it or whatever. So I got to do a bunch of them, which was great because it meant I got to see acts yeah. without having to fucking go to the shows. I saw an act called Jordan Gray, right? Now, this, this might sound, I don't want this to sound derogatory, right? But I walked in, saw this beautiful woman uh, sort of just walking around with dress and bare feet. And I was like, oh, fucking Jordan, nice to meet you. She headlined. And I was like, oh, cool. Then I looked at Jordan's feet. I was like, fuck, she's got big feet for a woman. Oh, and I had a wee think about it, right? Jordan Gray, phenomenal pianist, mm-hmm. right? Because I've seen it. <laughs> Connor. You need to go and let me have it. Like one that. of the best acts I have ever seen right. in my life, right? right. We kind of put you in mind of like Russell Brand with the sort of goofiness on stage. Okay. But could sing these phenomenal songs, play the keyboard brilliantly, right? right. So at one point she's like, she's fully clothed. She's playing the piano. She's st- doing yoga on the bench of the piano. Of course she is. Fucking belting it out. Absolutely murdering it, right? Then makes a joke about like, usually at this point of the show, this is where I get naked uh, and freak a lot of people out. And I initially thought, fuck, there's going to be someone on Late and Live who's just against the idea of trans people. There's going to be some cunt who's coming because it, it was notoriously always a rough mm. gig. Yeah, it was always full rough of gig. Fucking... I don't know. Would you find that? Well, I don't know. It's hard to know because Edinburgh's still, you know, there's still it's people who go festival, to it. But, Aye, like but there's still people more... who just go to it because it's on. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There's still fucking cunts yeah. in Edinburgh. Oh, there's still like, cunts everywhere. There's still I people going to support yeah. fucking yeah. Graham Lennon. Yeah. Uh, well, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Uh, so Jordan then strips down completely naked, right? My first thought, and this might sound awful misogynist, is fuck me, you wouldn't even know them ditties were fake. Right? Absolute great boob job, right? Bigger dick than me too, fuming. And then she goes, now you all know my secret. <laughs> she goes, I'm ginger. And you have to squint and see the wee bit of pube she has left. <laughs> and you're like, that's fucking hilarious. That right? fucking <laughs> then she starts playing piano again. <laughs> starts playing piano again. I'll be honest with you, Connor. I wish I wasn't standing where I was standing, but you put her foot up on the bench. <laughs> I was like, oh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Fair play. All right, here we go. But genuinely fucking astounding. One right. of the best things I've ever seen. Mighty. Just as a phenomenal performer. I think she was a, was she on The Voice? Right. I think that's where like kind of... She, she didn't get the cock out on The Voice, did she? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I, I don't watch The Voice, so I don't oh, know. Right, okay. I would have watched it if I'd have known. And yeah. Um, I don't think she would have done, but maybe... She, she was did. fucking brilliant. Right. Uh, and one of those ones where like, I think, because most people were doing late in life and just going home. Mm. And I was going, oh, I'm going to make a point to stay in here to watch. To watch it, yeah. Watch all the acts. Fucking phenomenal. Mighty. Uh so yeah, that was the best thing I've seen all fringe. I was uh, I was fanboying at the uh, late and live, just the event. <laughs> I don't know, not, not necessarily any acts on. I was like, I'm backstage at late and live. I, see what's weird? I always get this weird flashback of because the first time I ever did a, a gig in Edinburgh mm. was in Find Me the Funny. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, and it was in the the, the debating hall where late and live happens. So I always have this weird thing of being in the dressing room. And I, I could ne- I'd never. It felt like we were in a different dressing room mm-hmm. to the one they used for late in life. But the, you go down a spiral staircase to go to the bathroom and the toilets are always fucked. The toilets have mm-hmm. leaked since yeah. I've been doing it since then. But there was there's the same graffiti on the wall from like 2009, 2010. Right. So I always have this weird thing where we go down and have a pee and get, immediately get a flashback and go, whoa, fuck. Whoa. <laughs> and I get a wee bit of gratitude where I'm like, fucking right, I'm I'm in here all the time now. Like, <laughs> Your head in, do you know what I mean? Um, I'll never forget walking across uh, the street. We were, we, I don't know what we were, where we were going to, but you must have been in the middle of messaging Katie uh, about late in life. And it was the dreaded Wednesday, the hangover day. Right. And we were heading towards the compilation show. I think we were going to get some ice cream to see if that'll settle Aye. the fucking stuff. I did. I, well, the ice cream was lovely. <laughs> right. was right. And uh, you just turned to me and went, do you want to do late in life night? And my stomach fucking sank. Number one goes the amount of Gap Morgan's a little but also the nerves and I was like why did it have to be today Aye. you know when you're just not honest like you're just not like I had to cancel that gig earlier or whatever and I was like oh fucking hell uh, and then obviously you went and did it but it was only 10, ten minutes so it wasn't, it wasn't clear I think it was well, yeah it, just even the thought but I had it been the night before or night after fucking bright. I was just was yeah, I, yeah, this, so I think bad. this year that I had, I had a late and live clean sheet of every set was good yeah, well, because I've done a, I've done a couple over the years where I was like, we there, no? yeah, it's fucking great. Um, yeah, I had a great time. Actually, the, yeah, it's things like that where you go, it is good. Like, uh, like even today, I'm sort of jonesing for a wee bit of stand up. I'm like, I don't have a gig until Friday. And I'm like, that is the thing. I, I've never done that for the full twenty eight day run. You must get that sort of like that anti climatic fucking. It, it's so it's so like. it is very weird. Like, I mean, it, part of me is 
upset that I didn't stay for the Monday night. Because mm. the Monday night's just a fucking hooli. Like, Is that just an, an overall party? It's just, just an, yeah. fucking... So I think like the late and live lineup, there might be 20 acts on. Mm. And they're, they're like, we're doing this to three. Fuck it, yeah. we're dancing afterwards. There's a band coming on. Um, and it's yeah, always... Yeah, the video he's dancing on stage. Th- and that wasn't even the last night. That was the second last night. Oh, that was the Saturday night. Yeah, okay. Sunday. Um, but... Yeah, I'm, now, now that I'm home and I knew like all those flights getting delayed and stuff, I'm yeah, kind of like you're fucking relieved. Like, and you miss me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's a weird, it's a strange thing too. The, the sort of friendships I've built over the years, like so, like Duck for example, I wouldn't yeah. see him the rest of the year. Yeah. But in Edinburgh, we're always sitting beside each other. I haven't seen him in fucking I don't know maybe seven years. I I and almost it, I, I just felt like I hadn't seen him since last year. I almost cried on the Sunday night. There was a whole bunch of us sitting back at late and live. And uh, he was talking to when I went over last year for four days and just fucked off home. And he was like, that fucker just fucking left me. Like, he's not really fucking here. Me. Fucking. And I was like, hey, thank you. I needed to hear that today. I'm so tired. Uh, and fair play to them too for shorting us out for, for tickets for Foil Arms and Hog as well. Yeah, they were uh, great. They were fucking brilliant. That baggage yeah. sketch was fucking brilliant. Oh, man, I just fucking, I just, uh, they're, they're, I, I loved, I haven't seen them and maybe, Eight, ten years since he'd done dailies. Um, I hadn't really seen him at the, at the big shows, like, and I was like, oh, this is fucking great. Aye. This is amazing. Um, yeah. And Doc, Doc, I said to Doc, he's got the fucking voice for a podcast, hasn't he? Oh, he's got man, the he's, best he's, voice I, in fucking comedy. It's fucking, um, and he's not even on stage. Yeah. <laughs> he came in on, on Sunday night, because I think they all had a real, real big night on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting with Milo, uh, strangling myself. And... <laughs> document i've never seen him angry before he's really? like i'm just so fucking angry i'm so <laughs> he's like do you want a pint and milo was like no more he's like shut the fuck up take a pint <laughs> he's just fucking fuming and then uh another like ryan cullen turned up and obviously i had some vitamins with me yes but i thought i'm not gonna take them back home those are the ones that you could eat the, the edibles and uh edible vitamins yeah vitamin d vitamin c and so are the ones you can eat yeah yeah I just like to say edibles is the way you would actually say that in a polite sense. If you're down on the street, you say eddies. Well, yeah, you eddies. <laughs> 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 and uh, the thing is, now, I know I mentioned these edibles last last time. The that last time, talking yeah. Won't lie to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody in between at home. I went outside space a couple of times. Like, right, I know you could probably fucking chew a whole bag and nothing happened to you. Ryan Cullen, who's got quite a strong tolerance for weed, mm-hmm. I was like, man, do you want the rest of these? And again, it was one of those, there's a real nice thing at the end of the fringe where if anybody does have a bit of weed or whatever and they're going home, it's like, you may as well have that one. Yeah. Just do it. it becomes like a fucking... It's like when you stash Like some, a swapping shop and everyone's just... There's a, a for anybody that doesn't know, there's a Reddit uh, for Amsterdam and that's for the same thing. Boys are like, they stash whatever's left that they don't want to take through the airport at a bin or something take a photograph and go here it is right. <laughs> so it's like every day Last. if you're in Amsterdam you just wait for the photograph and you go and find free weed <laughs> like fucking Pokemon Go yeah, like... Pokemon Go a bit slow <laughs> uh, and I so I gave Ryan the, the, and there was quite a few left to be fair mm-hmm. uh, and he's like I'll give you money if he says man don't worry about it fucking enjoy yourself and then he texts me just <laughs> he just goes how many milligrams of these I went I have no fucking idea but take one see what happens <laughs> he came back an hour later <laughs> <laughs> If you know Ryan Cullen, right, mm-hmm. he's pretty pale. <laughs> Fuck me. The, the cunt was see-through. Right? <laughs> he looked like tracing paper. <laughs> he was that stoned he couldn't even be funny, right? Because he's he's off stage. He's so fucking quick. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And he's so fucking funny. And he was like, even Duck was going, you, you're you not even funny today. <laughs> and his girlfriend oh. said, well, I can't feel anything. I can't feel a fucking thing. And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm gonna miss those wee things. I fucking. But it, what I found out with I them had was, five of them went for wee dander at Edinburgh. Aye. and uh, had lunch three times. I will see they do affect you somehow. Like <laughs> what I what I figured, what bastard. I figured what I figured out was they're kind of like the quaaludes in Wolf of Wall Street. If you go to sleep at the right time, <laughs> fucking best sleep you'll ever have. If you stay awake five more minutes, motherfucker. <laughs> you're like do, do you want Freddy Krueger when he comes out of the wall. That's that's what you lean on something you're like. That's, Oh, Jesus, what it'd be like to be back to those good old days. Yeah, man. Yeah, as a wise man once said, never do drugs. So when you do do drugs, they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. 
It was uh, good times. I now. sure I heard a bit of good. I was fucking wrong. And French. The word, it did. It has given me a new sort of invigorated love for stand up again, which I kind of needed. Kind of did that for me too. You um, know, in a short space of time. Uh, kind of gave me a wee kick up the arse about putting my show together and trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah, and I went home that actually. Uh, well, not that night because it was fucking dying. <laughs> but the night after, and sat down and wrote out a a, a structure, like a, a bullet point of a, of right. a show. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Happy days, I'll try my best and see if I can get it to the fringe next year, but. I'm not lucky enough to be able. I would have to apply for the full run, so I don't know how I would do well, it. Well, the thing just is, a, I think like um, a week or two weeks or thing, but we'll see. There's a lot of people. What the fuck is this shit? Sorry. Uh, there's a no, lot of people now right. that you, you, you deal with your correspondence. Sorry, I'm always there, busy. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's always work, 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 work. Uh, don't know what happened. It's, um, it's nudes. Like. It's not fucking nudes. Me agent. You could send me a fucking nude. The woman's had a double mastectomy. <laughs> I've got cheers for sending that photo of that wee lad from the fucking ice witch. She's real skinny too. Um, but, in fact, I'm not even sure if that's true. <laughs> What's my second? Isn't you, if you don't have any balls in it. It's a joke about words. No. Um, fuck you, I was going to say something. Ah, aye. In terms of the fringe, you could definitely go and do two weeks because I think that a lot more people, a lot more comedians are going to go over and not do the full run. Yeah. Because it... Unless they do something fucking drastic by next year, it's, it's costing way too much for mm. a lot of people to get over. That's why nobody was really out. So, like, most people... I did notice that. There's, there was a massive drop at the loft and the abattoir, which I find very hard to say. Because, um, as an I would agree, it's the... It's the mate. It's the abattoir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, saying abattoir, and like, hey, what's wrong with you? Fucking, Ooh, la, la. That's, that's the fucking abattoir. Uh, fucking... So yeah, that was. I did notice there was a bit of a drop. Normally, like when you're at the back part on the lo- uh, in the loft, all the tables were usually yeah. filled, and you like were fighting for a seat. There was like our table, and that was it. Aye. That was really yeah. Because really it used cool. to be there was times you'd be in that loft bar, and you, like they would go, everybody needs to come back in. There's too many people outside. Yeah. Like the roof's going to cave in, but no. Um, I, I isn't isn't necessarily that, a bad thing either, though, that comedians well, I, go there and take it seriously? Well, I thought was it because there was a uh, last week, and I came on like a Monday, Tuesday. You know, was it? Did you notice that at the weekends? If you were in, did you see? Yeah, that's the thing. I was, I was only in sort of the next year with her. Um, oh, look, Sloss came up with a great thing about that, saying about the younger comedians, kind of the COVID thing. They didn't really get a chance to. Yeah, that's a really good point. Rooms, yeah, so yeah. Don't really, they don't really know really, as many people. They haven't really con- created a network, especially yeah. if they if they came from social media. Yeah, they sort of have their own thing, and that's it. They don't really. So it seemed like there was one that we went to Monkey Barrel, and I think that's where a lot of the younger ones were performing, and that seemed to be a place where it was kind of a bit oh, busier. Right, right, okay. Um, but I think as well, like the Loft Bar had that kind of. It was that weird industry bar people went to, and mm. it was always that. You know, you'd be talking to someone all of a sudden they just look over their shoulder mm-hmm. to see who had walked in. And I've, I've had it happen to me several times. You're chatting away to someone and they just fucking disappear. Yeah, just, yeah. Because they're way over to fucking kiss some showbiz ass. Yeah. So stuff like that happens too, you know. But, that's um, what I mean when Milo came in and you just fucking disappeared. That's because I took my pants off as soon as I seen him. <laughs> Google him and tell me you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. He's oh, a my stunner. God. Um, and funny as fuck. Yeah, oh, like I was such genius. an talented, talented performer. Because so, one of the things I didn't know about him until recently was, if you don't know who we're talking about, by the way, it's uh, Milo McCabe as Troy Hawk, yeah, who does the, the Greeters Guild. The Greeters Guild, you'll see the clips on yeah. on, on social media. So but I didn't realize that he had genius. he had uh, used to do a bunch of characters. Oh right. So he went up there one year. I don't like. I don't know if he ever did straight stand up, but he he was doing quite well in clubs with a different character, and kind of got to a point where creatively he thought, "I'm I'm kind of at the end of the the road with this." Mm-hmm. And Troy Hawk was a different character he had in a show where he played three or four different people in the one show. Right, okay. And he thought that was worth exploring. And that's the one that's really blown up for him. Fucking massive. Um, so, like, he sold out, he was there for a week and sold out every, every, every show. Every show. And there was meet and greets and all that. Meet and greets. And like, fucking crazy. <clears throat> I had to take the elevator up to my own gig because <laughs> the meet and greets were so busy I couldn't get to the bar. <clears throat> <laughs> hey, well, anybody want to talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> It was like, going, do you know yeah, what I mean? It was like being at Comic Con, but you were just an extra. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was a red shirt in Star Wars. <laughs> ah, fuck off. <laughs> I was an orc in Lord of the Rings. You want an autograph? No, you're all right, but cheers. No, I want to talk to fucking, what do you call him? Elijah. All right. Superstar, like. Oh. Um, and it, it, it is, like, I mean, there's, there's a definite thing that I sort of have taken for granted over the years is that the network of people I've met over there, mm. comedians, and like, yo, fuck, there is a real fucking close bunch of. 
And I yeah, think outwardly I, it kind of looks toxic. Sometimes I think a lot of people think that a, you know a, a squad of male comedians, it yeah. looks like they're going to be boisterous, and they are. There's a lot of fucking drinking and partying, whatever else. But yeah. everybody would be like, "You all right? What are you, what are you doing? You right? Do you want to hug?" <laughs> Do you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's kind of the same as what the, the the vibe is here is that like if you talk like we were talking to Duck and then we we're talking to the boys from well we didn't see Connor but we seen the two Shans yeah um from Foil Arms and Hog and then Sloss again they're all the ones we kind of. Came up with came almost up like, with, yeah. you know what I mean? Same as like Shane and Colin and all here. Yeah. It's like it's all that same sort of crew. So I wouldn't know any of the new comedians. Aye. It would you would obviously if you're you're gigging more over across the water than I would be, but even then it's like, oh you know, there's a sort of a, like basically talking to the Foyle Arms and Hogs guy and going, Do you remember the shitty fucking headsets you said? <laughs> you know, oh, that? Yeah, yeah. you know, you can go back and go, Do you remember the time I met you that day you were fucking flying and you were fucking depressed as fuck? Aye. You know, and I remember now, seeing them not, depressed. Aye. now they're flying in and they're doing five nights sold out in Key and Hall. You're like, you know, fucking fair play to you. Because they're good boys. We're good, good boys. Good boys. Good boys. So we're all good, good boys. This island. Oh shit. Oh shit. Well, I'd say all good. I don't feel too good right now. No. I went to the gym this morning. I thought I was going to vomit too. Like, oh, lovely! I think it's one of them because Edinburgh tends to be you feel you lose weight, you feel good, and then you get home and something starts growing out of your neck or something, mm. and your body's like, "Oh, I've been keeping a wee secret." <laughs> You're filled with poison. <laughs> You've been distracted with comedy. Yeah. Well, I've been working away, growing on your neck. Yeah. So hopefully, I don't get fucking sick this time because I I think I was the only one dodged getting fucking fringe flu and like COVID was going about again. Yeah. Um, and I managed to dodge all of it. You know, neck, I say. Um, I don't so, get it. Huh? I don't get it. Things going. To, you have to have a neck for something to grow out of. It. Oh well, I suppose you're alright too, don't you? Uh, I have uh, four chins growing. Oh, you're fucking right. Four chins pizza. Anyway, we're going to go to Patreon now and answer some questions from you lovely patrons. Because fuck you. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks for listening to us talking about the fringe there for, Thank you fucking, very much, yeah, yeah. for our fringe recap. Free, fringe recap. That was it. Fucking drunk, sober, stoned, drunk again. Stoned again. Stoned and a half. <laughs> stoned. <laughs> stoned as fuck. Pretty fucking stoned. Everybody got stoned. Buffalo truck. Buffalo truck. And Willie Thompson called somebody Kurt Colerain. It's a long story. <laughs> but by fuck, it's the hardest I've laughed in my life. Anyway, thanks very much. See you later on. All the best. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs>